Good morning, everyone. Someone said, don't tell God how great your problems are. Tell your problems how great God is. Tonight is Lagba Omer. Lagba Omer, on the counting of the Omer, each day has a a uh, Kabbalistic attribute associated with it. Tonight on Lagba Omer is Hod Shabahod, gratitude of gratitude. Now, by the way, if anyone's in West Palm Beach tomorrow, if you're watching this, just please come at 4.30 to the Morse Life because we're going to show our gratitude by spreading our gratitude with the elderly at Morse to bring the joy of the festivity to the residents at Morse Life from 4.30 to 7. We'll have a barbecue and a big celebration. But why is this day associated with gratitude of gratitude? One of the reasons is that historically, on Lagba Omer was the day that when the Jews were in the desert, they ran out of food after they left Egypt 33 days later, and the manna that fell from heaven began to descend on Lagba Omer. And therefore, Lagba Omer is also associated with deep gratitude. Why? Because we know that when something comes from heaven, unexpectedly, we're very grateful. Wow, God sent me a blessing from heaven. But when we do something on our own, we feel like that was my accomplishment. That wasn't from God, necessarily. And we fail to recognize the gratitude to Hashem. So the Torah tells us, just like in the manna from heaven, Jews realize this is a direct gift from Hashem. When you plant your field and you reap your produce, that's also a direct gift from God. Just like it's miraculous for mana to fall from heaven, it's miraculous for a seed to go in the ground, decay and rot in the earth, and suddenly fresh fruits and vegetables and grain starts growing. That's equally miraculous. Just you've gotten accustomed to this and you're not that accustomed to that. But really, every aspect of our lives is from Hashem, including the air we're breathing right now, and therefore our lives should be full of gratitude of gratitude. It's interesting, here we see the way Lagba Omer connects to this week's Parsha. This week's Parsha talks about the sabbatical year, and Hashem says, one year, don't work your field. And the Torah says, you're going to say, how am I going to survive if I don't work for a whole year? What will I eat if I can't plow the field in the seventh year? It has to rest and lay fallow. And God says, I'll send my blessing in the sixth year, and there'll be enough for the sixth, the seventh, to get you through to the eighth. And that's the way a Jew has to live his life. A Jew has to live with faith, knowing that everything comes from Hashem, everything's miraculous, everything is divine. As Albert Einstein once said, either everything is miraculous or nothing's miraculous, or clearly everything is miraculous, and therefore you don't have to worry. The Torah tells the Jew, don't worry about what you're going to eat. Hashem took care of you up until now and take care of you now as well. The same Hashem who provided to you until this moment will get you through this challenge. And that's why we have to remember on Lagba Omer this lesson that we should be filled with gratitude of gratitude and acknowledge that all our blessings come directly from Hashem. And like this, the Torah says, you don't have to go through life worrying about what will I eat, what will I do, what will happen. You know that Hashem will provide His blessing. It's a story told about two friends. They both inherited a lot of money, a lot of gold. So, you know, you get a big inheritance, you want to save it. So they both went into the backyard and decided to bury their pot of gold so they'll have money, you know, for a rainy day. But they had different personalities. One guy was a chronic warrior. He was always scared, he was always paranoid, full of fear. The other guy was an easygoing, happy, relaxed guy, everything's good. So the guy who was a warrior, he's like, okay, my neighbors are gonna see me doing this, I better do it in the middle of the night when I was looking. And he went in the middle of the night with a shovel, he started digging a hole to bury his gold from his inheritance. And he's looking over his shoulder every three seconds, running back, oh, someone may be seeing me. Finally, he buries his pot of gold. The other guy was an easygoing guy. So, in the middle of the day, he went out, he dug a hole, he put it in the ground, he couldn't look over his shoulder to see who's looking. Uh, he was relaxed. What happened? Sure enough, the guy who did it in the middle of the day, one of his neighbors saw. The next day, the neighbor came in the middle of the night, dug up the hole, and stole the pot of gold. The other guy, no one saw him. But because the other guy was a warrior, the next day, he was like, one minute, maybe someone saw. So he went back to dig up to see if the gold was still there. But he miscalculated because he did it in the middle of the night. He didn't see the exact spot. He, he dug 15 feet away from where it really was. He digs it up. The gold is gone. Oh my gosh, someone stole my gold. He was grief stricken. He was depressed. He was, and for the rest of his life, he lived depressed that all my gold was gone. Someone stole my fortune, my life savings. But meanwhile, it was 15 feet away. The other guy, on the other hand, sure enough, his neighbor saw, and the middle of the night stole his gold. But he wasn't a warrior, so he never went to check the gold. 
So he lived his whole life happy. I got a pot of gold in the backyard. Everything's great. There was no money there, but he was happy because he had confidence. So who was the rich guy and he was the poor guy? Technically, the guy who had his gold stolen was poor, and the guy who still had it there was rich. But this guy lived with a mindset that my money is stolen, so he lived like a warrior his whole life. He was depressed. He lived like a poor man. The other guy lived with the confidence that I have a pot of gold in my backyard. He was happy all the day of his life. Happiness is not only how much money you have in your bank account, but your mindset. Do you have a mindset of confidence, of trust, of wealth, of happiness, of gratitude? Then you're a rich man. But if you have all the money in the world, but you worry all day, what am I going to eat tonight? What am I going to eat tomorrow? Will I have enough for this? Will I have enough for that? Then really, psychologically, you're poor. And therefore, the Torah says, if you could take a year off of work in the seventh year and say, don't worry, Hashem will take care of me. I got no problems. Then you really are the owner of your land. You are a wealthy man because you live with the mindset of freedom and the mindset of wealth and trust and faith in Hashem. Amen.